I'm probably one of the only guys who actually be able to tell you the real process because I'm probably the only guy you'll ever meet that didn't go through an agency and didn't pay anything, um, you know, yeah, yeah, without okay. receipts, if that makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. And then I went to go traveling around the world just to sort of see what was up. So I went to South Korea and I came to Southeast Asia because my sister said Southeast Asia was really cool. She was right. I came here and I, I just didn't leave. 17 years later, I'm still here. Hey folks, Pete here from Tyrish Times standing in a bit of a messy room there's a lot going on here more about that in a minute but that's not why we're here we're here today to um interview mark abbott an expat who's been living in thailand for 17 years and he's still only 38 years old mark's got a really interesting story he's completely fluent in thai he works for the chairman of the CP Group, which is one of the largest corporations in Thailand. He also runs a fitness and media YouTube and Facebook account with over 200,000 subscribers called Thai Talk Fitness. He's also the uh, bilingual ring announcer for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. And he's also in the final stages of becoming a Thai citizen. We're going to get into all of that in this interview, particularly the last part about becoming a Thai citizen, because Mark's going to kind of set it straight. There's a lot of rumors when you're living in Thailand about how do you become a Thai citizen? What do you need to do? Some people say you have to sing the national anthem in Thai. Other people say, no, you don't. So Mark's going to set it out straight. What you need, what, what the process he's gone through to become a Thai citizen. But anyway... Look at the room. What's going on here? I said it in the uh, last video. A lot of clutter there. All my camera gear. We got a picture frame. We got a, a bag for my lights. My new lights arrived today. This room is going to be the uh, the future of Tyrus Times. This is going to be a podcast room. We I'm setting it up now. It's going to be ready pretty soon. I need to get a table. As you can see, there's no table here. Uh, or we could sit on the ground, Thai style. Imagine if I did an interview like that. Anyway, I digress. Let's get straight into the interview. Let's go meet Mark. And uh, if you like the content, do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave me a comment because it helps out this channel a lot. And the channel needs some help. Anyway, let's get into it. So, Mark, yeah. thanks very much for doing this. Uh, good. I always start off with the, the same question. Like, tell us where you're from. I was born in South Africa and I was there for three years and then America for one year. And then I grew up in Buckinghamshire, England. So I have dual nationality. I'm on my way to get my third nationality. So that's South African and British so far. So you moved from South Africa to Britain. What was life like growing up in, in Britain then? Same as it was for everyone growing up. I mean, I, I'm English, you know, like I was born in South Africa, but I was there for three years. I, as far as I'm concerned, I'm English. I grew up in England. That's just for me, normal kid growing up in England, I guess. It was good. It was all right. Shitty weather, but it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm looking out at a cloudy sky. Uh, anyway, so how did you end up coming to Thailand? Tell us that story, that journey. I joined the Royal Marines and then I came out within about a year because I bust up my knee. And then I went to go traveling around the world just to sort of see what was up. And my, so I went to South Korea and I came to Southeast Asia because my sister said Southeast Asia was really cool. And I, she was right. I came here and I, I just didn't leave basically. 17 years later, I'm still here. I mean, I go home on, on holiday and whatnot, but uh, yeah, I just stayed. I think I just much preferred the lifestyle over here. So you would have been in your early twenties then? Yeah. Yeah, I came here when I was twenty one. I'm thirty eight now. Wow. Okay. So, uh, what is it about Thailand that you love so much that, you, that you've spent seventeen years here? You know what? I I, I think it's it's got to be the people, right? I mean, when you look at any country, there are lots of places with beautiful beaches, palm trees. There are lots of places with great food. If you want great food, Italy, Japan, France, Vietnam, lots of places with great food. At the end of the day, it's the, it's the people that make the place so livable, right? It's, it's, the, it's the culture, it's the, it's the welcoming, uh, sort of carefree lifestyle that they lead. I, I absolutely love the people here. So, yeah, that, that I would, yeah, I think that's it, the people. Now, what's very interesting about you is you're fluent in Thai, and your Thai is yeah. really, really good. 
tell us how did you how did you learn how did you become fluent uh I, so i i mean never try to become fluent just for the if anyone is trying to learn the language don't try to become fluent that's that's a bit of a hurdle to sort of mentally get your head over i just arrived in thailand and i think like anyone you kind of want to learn how to say thank you and hello and i learned how to say thank you and hello and then i learned how to say how much but the problem was i couldn't understand the answer because i hadn't learned to count yet so i was like okay i'll go and learn how to count and then i got a little bit frustrated because the books were spelling things differently like one book would have pom uh, p o m and another book would be p h o m and they'd be using all these different annotations to show which tone it was and i thought to myself well if you read and write Thai, there's only one way to write that poem. There's just one way to do it. So if I learn how to read and write it, I don't have to keep on learning new systems when I'm trying to get a new book and try to try to get better. So I taught myself how to read and write. And then with that, you, your pronunciation just gets leaps and bounds, just infinitely better. And step by step, you know, interested in talking to people, interested in, I was single as well, you know, so you're talking to women and, and whatnot, that, that's kind of, you know, it's kind of fun. It's a good icebreaker when, you know, being able to speak Thai. So yeah, that was just sort of gradual, gradual uh, steps. Uh, and How long did it take? Like, what, did that take a year, two years until the point where you were like, well, I've really learned a lot. That's a, I mean, that's a really difficult question to answer because fluency is defined differently by everyone. And I think that it's almost as though, I, I guess it's like if you, if you compare it to walking in a, or, or, you know, walking around at nighttime and then your eyes slowly adjust until you can slowly see more and more, or at least what you can't see becomes less and less. So when you're becoming fluent in a language, you, you don't really sort of become fluent. It's just the things that you don't understand become few and far between. And then sort of they're, they're typically in context that you don't see every day. So I would say that I was conversational to a very basic fluency level about six months. Um, I was definitely fluent by two years. And I think that by the time I was fluent and also had the accent sort of dialed in was about four years. But it says, because having the accent dialed in is not the same as having the tones dialed in. A lot of people can get the tones right but then they still sound like a like a foreigner speaking Thai do you think in Thai because I was talking to my wife last night and she said that there was a moment in her life I think she was about maybe 10 years old or 11 years old and she was at the market and she was thinking in English and she's she was like an epiphany for her where she was going around she was looking at the fruits and stuff like that and she was like she was just thinking how much they are everything was going in English was there a moment like that for you? Typically what will happen is you'll think in the language that you're speaking in. That's kind of typically the, the, the beginning part. When you, you, if I'm speaking in Thai, I'm thinking in Thai. And you can see when someone's actually struggling with fluency here, when, when, they, when they start counting and they, they'll, they'll revert back to their mother tongue in when they start counting, then you know that they're still struggling with that fluency. Because when I'm talking to someone and I'm counting and I'm calculating numbers in my head, if we're talking Thai, I'll be calculating the numbers in Thai because my that's just what my brain's doing at that point so it'll be sort of situational but yeah i completely i do think in thai um dep again depending on the situation if i'm thinking of a situation that involves some thai friends of mine or some thai colleagues yeah i've been thinking in thai if i think about something that's happening with my friends from england or america or australia i'll be thinking in english so it'll it'll flip yeah like if i dream about talking to a thai person in a bank yeah my dream will be in thai Right. You know, the, the Thai person won't suddenly speak a, a, another language to me. So it'll be in Thai. But then if I dream that I fly back to England, and I see my family, then I'll be dreaming in English. So it, it does flip in, in between, depending on the situation. Do you feel that you're more accepted in Thai society that you because you can speak Thai? 100 percent. Absolutely. 100 percent. It. I mean, it's actually quite interesting because when I first came to Thailand, I was told by several um foreigners I keep on going to say white guy i'll say white guy because it's usually the white guys that say this it's it's very rarely my other asian foreign friends or whatnot it's anyway and they're like oh don't bother learning thai even if you can learn it they won't like it and i remember thinking to myself well that's strange because if i if i learn thai and then i find out they don't like it i just won't speak it i'll just be it'll be like a thing i can do i just don't show anyone you know what i mean like i just won't speak it turns out they're quite the opposite it it just they they just see such a uh they, they just really appreciate that, that you put the effort in that you cared about their culture their language 
uh, and and their country that it's it's completely different. I mean, I from that's from my personal experience. I don't know if other people have had that experience, but for me, night and day with the way they treat me being being fluent in Thai. Cool. So uh, let's talk about your work because you've got a lot of stuff going on here. I was just wrote some stuff down. Um, you're a, I suppose you're probably big in, in the health and fitness scene. That's probably um your bread and butter, is it? No, that's my hobby. So my bread and my main job is I actually work for the um, chairman of the CP group, uh, which is the biggest company in Thailand, uh, it, biggest uh, shrimp provider in the world, third biggest chicken provider in the world, own all the 7-Elevens in Thailand, the master franchise for 7-Eleven, um, heaps of different investments in China, Pamps, it, it, it's, a, it's a huge company. So I work for him uh, in business development. And then I also have a fitness media channel, which is Thai Top Fitness, which I think I've got about 200,000 followers on YouTube and about the same on Facebook. Uh, and that's all about fitness. Now, that's where more people would know me from because it's much more of a public thing, if that makes sense. And then from that, I got into the Muay Thai uh, MC role, which is what I do now uh, on, on TV every week. Well, hold on. You blitz through all that. That's all good stuff. <laughs> Let's go back to the business development stuff because I actually missed that there. Um, that's really interesting. How did you get into that? I I got it's a long story short, but I got I got offered the job by the the chairman who at the time was the executive uh, vice chairman. He's now the chairman. He offered me a job in that position, so I took it. It's about 11, 12 years ago, I think. So I've been with uh, with the company for a substantial period of time um and yeah are you managing a group of of thai staff is that how it works or is there, are there foreigners no there? so uh there are not a lot of foreigners but no effectively to to keep a very boring um story short uh it's a it's a very large company uh, we, we also own true telecommunications which is the biggest telecommunications company in thailand so we get a lot of different projects coming through, whether it's new investments for whether it's new um, technology that we may be interested in or a, a business that we have in the new geographical area, some something new that we might want to look at. We get a lot of those projects coming through. So we have a look at those projects. If it's something interesting, we will then go and work with the uh, business unit that is in the portfolio of, in our companies that would be relevant to that particular project. Uh, so that's effectively what I do. You happy doing that? It's it's interesting. I mean, you see a lot of because when you're doing these this type of work, you travel around a lot and you do a lot of different a lot of I mean, it's a huge company. So we have a lot of different uh, interests and uh, each project is so different from the other that it, there's no monotony in it, which is which is kind of cool. Uh, travel around, meet a lot of interesting people. Uh, so, yeah, it's 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 a it's it's challenging. It's a lot of fun. And you've got a really successful YouTube channel, Thai Top Fitness. You've started that yeah, years it's, ago it, as well. Yeah, it's not as successful as it should be because the problem is I've got these annoying things called morals. Um, and <laughs> when you when you when you run a fitness channel, if you've got morals, you 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 kind of capped into what how how big you can grow because people don't like hearing the truth when it comes to fitness and health. They don't like that. They like to hear all the 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 shortcuts. They like to hear all the shit about you know, optimizing and uh, biohacking. Biohacking is a is a term used by crazy people for self-medicating with shit you don't know what the fuck it is. And that's what this is. People are really like that. They don't like to understand what the real science is and and and, and the real way to just have, have, have good health. They don't really like that. So it's notoriously difficult to grow any type of business or YouTube channel that in, in the fitness industry that is um, honest and... Um, I'm, I'm I'm trying to fight the good fight. <laughs> well, let's move it to um your job here as a ring announcer for Bare Knuckle Fight Club. That's uh, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, yeah. Oh, fighting championship. BKFC. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, what? How did you get that one? So, uh, Nick Chapman is the CEO. He bought the rights for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship or BKFC in Thailand, and with his partner Kun Kov. And they got it from Dave Feldman. So Dave Feldman is the founder and CEO of BKFC Global. And they would they did the first event back in December, it would have been December 18th in Pattaya. And he was and he contacted me in around about uh, September, 
I think he wanted me to do another uh, another role, which was uh, commentary. But I don't do good commentary, and it's a, they're very different skills. And I said to him, I was like, I don't do commentary, uh, so thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> I, and he kind of appreciated my honesty there because I wasn't just trying to grab money from him because he would have paid me. I, I just said to him, I don't, it's not what I'm good at. Anyway, long story short, but his the the ring announcer they had, they sort of decided not to go with that ring announcer, and then he asked me if I wanted to do it. So I said, yeah, sure, that sounds great. So I did their first show on December 18th, and then we did another show in May, and then just recently with Borkao, the Muay Thai legend, made his Benacle debut, um, and yeah, I was ring announcing that, so that's a lot of fun. What was it yeah. like meeting Borkao? Oh, I know Borkao quite well uh, with friends, so uh, we, we've done a lot of work with each other before, so... Uh, he's, 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 he's a cool guy. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, tough as, uh, I mean, tough as they, as you would imagine, right. One of the most dangerous sort of Muay Thai fighters the world's ever known. Of course he's a uh, tough, but yeah, no, really nice guy. Super humble, really good with the fans. Just, yeah, really all around good guy. Well, like I've, I've written down here that I wasn't, cause this is the first time we've met. So I wasn't sure how, how you're going to be. Cause usually, you know, I don't do them face to face or I usually do do them face to face. I don't usually do them online because it's hard to build a bit of rapport before you interview someone, but I can feel from you, right? You're, you're quite a motivated guy. And you're not, you're not the type of guy that's going to sit around all day watching Netflix. Are you? I, I can't, I've got, so I've, I've, um, I have ADHD, which I think is kind of cool. Everyone thinks they got ADHD now, don't they? It's, it's almost as though saying that is pointless because everyone's like, oh, me too. It's like, you don't have ADHD. Most people, it's like if, if porn and Netflix and the internet is distracting you, you have this thing called you live in 2022. ADHD is, is, is uh, depends on the type of ADHD you have. It's a, it's a real thing. So um, it, it has its negatives, but it has its positives. So, you know, um, I'm always doing something. I can't not do something and like, I can't relax. So my wife and I, she don't, we don't ever go to the beach and just do nothing. I, I, that would drive me insane. I don't understand how people can do that. Like sit down and just do nothing that I it blows my mind. Cool. You know, we, the world needs people who, are, you know, the, the beauty in the world is the fact that everyone's different, but the fact that you could look at your life and realize that everything time is so limited and sit back and do nothing for an entire day or two, watch a bunch of series of other people living their lives when out in the outdoors there's a place for you to live your life, blows my mind. And it's almost like, it's it's like a, like if I'm sitting down watching something on TV, it's like, I, I get like an itch, like an itch, like, 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 what am I doing? What a loser. And I, that's just how I feel, you know, so I kind of get up and I have to go and do something, which is the, you know, it's obviously has its negatives, but yeah, that, that keeps me, Keeps me busy. <laughs> Tell us about a typical day off that you'd have in Bangkok. What would you do? Um, so I go, I mean, it depends uh, on the weather. So I, I might go to play golf. I might go skydiving. I might, uh, I've got like an EUC, which is like one of those, um, I'm not sure if you know them. EUC sounds cool. It's actually an electric unicycle. I think that doesn't sound so cool. It sounds like a clown at a circus, right? But uh, EUC, so basically it's like, you stand either side of it and it's, there's a wheel in the middle and you can kind of buzz around on it. I, I've got that thing, which is pretty cool. Go around on that. Um, I'll go to the gym. I'll go for a bike ride. I'll go see my friends. I'll go shooting. I'll do some archery. I'll rock climb, anything, just something, something. So it depends on the weather. It depends on what my friends are doing. Like if, if you know, if, if the guys are doing something, yeah, we'll do something together. If they're not doing something, I'll go and find something, go jump out of an airplane or something. Are you here in Thailand for the long haul? So I've put in my application for my Thai citizenship. I've passed all the stages. It's uh, it's in the last stage now, which is waiting for the king to sign it, um, which apparently he actually signs it. You would have imagined that he'd have like a note or like some secretary. Apparently he actually signs it. No, it's in that stage there. So that should possibly answer the question there. Yeah, I'm here for the long for the long run. Uh, getting Thai about- citizenship is not easy. Tell us about Thai citizenship. How, tell us the process that you went through. Sure. Um, I, I'm actually probably, this probably, I hope this doesn't sound arrogant, but I'm probably one of the only guys who actually be able to tell you the real process because I'm probably the only guy you'll ever meet that didn't go through an agency and didn't pay anything, um, you know, yeah, yeah, without okay. receipts, if that makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so basically, long story short, I, I hadn't applied for my Thai citizenship because I had been told, and this is just, 
goes to show if, if you hear something about what can and can't be done in this country as a foreigner, don't listen to those, those typically losers who just, they just like suck. They wake up to a beer on a Monday morning and they just lose us and they just, they're like, oh, you can't do this. And I was listening to those morons. So I didn't apply for my citizenship. And one day I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to go and find out what the deal is. So the, a lot of these agents, they work with people because a lot of people who apply for their, their ties. Okay. It's kind of good, but it's not legitimately fluent. And I, and they don't want to go into like a government office and try and go through paperwork for government official paperwork. That's right now going. So you go into this, into some Piban, which is, um, it's it's an office at the general police station in the Siam area and you get your you basically go in there and it's for naturalization to Thai citizenship and you tell them what your status is i.e I, I have a work permit and i'm married you kind of tell them that or you know whatever your status is you tell them that and they get a piece of paper that'll sort of list out the criteria of what it is you need to prepare for the documents and that's going to differ obviously depending on several things which country you come from so if you're coming from burma it'll be a lot easier because it's the asian countries but if you come from england it's a lot more difficult um it'll it'll depend on again if you're married to a thai national it's it's a lot easier than if you're not and so the list of things so you go through that you've got to get things like education certificates your marriage certificate you've got to get uh, a letter from your embassy stating that you are prepared to relinquish your British citizenship in the successful receipt of your Thai citizenship. Um, but that's not a commitment. So you, I can come back to that one at some point uh, if you want. You need to have uh, back taxes. I can't remember if it's three or five years, but you have to have back taxes and the amount and and, and you've got to, it's, it's got to be really, really, they're quite strict on that one there. You can't be skipping any months here and there so this kind of sucks for people who went home for three months here four months there it kind of cuts it and resets the clock again so you've got to have that you've got to have a minimum of five thousand baht in donations which you can't have you can't sort of make them while you go for, through for the application process because they'll know that that's the only reason why you did it so you they kind of uh, you, you've got to have that it's a minimum of five thousand baht and then once you've got all that all the information you kind of put it through there they do a police background check at your local police office, which is a little bit pointless because you could just move house and anyway, you, you get that. Uh, you have to have a police background check from your home country as well to make sure you don't have a criminal record. And I'm not sure what the process would be if you do have a criminal record. I fortunately don't. You have an interview as well. So I had to have an interview with my wife and I also had brought in two witnesses or character references, if you will. Now, I think most people, when they bring in a character reference, they bring some you know member of society like i don't know like a monk or some police general that they know because they want to show that they've they're, they've got big i don't know i brought in two of my friends two of my thai friends because i you know they come from good families but i was like look these guys actually know me and they were quite surprised to see that they were like actually we like that because you know you can ask them questions about me and they'll tell you what i do when i get drunk you know <laughs> they'll be able to give you the real answers you have to have an interview with my wife as well they interview you separately and then they interview you together as well you get a a questionnaire. Uh, so it's a questionnaire. Sorry, it's like a question. He sort of offered the sprayed them out, and you kind of picked one. And it had like, if I remember correctly, it was about ten ish questions, and you have to get, uh, I think it's like seven, or eight, or more correct. And they are typically pretty basic questions, like how many, and they're multiple choice, like how many uh, provinces are there in Thailand? Um, you know what you know who is what's the king's name and whatnot but some of them are a bit tricky like for example what is the minister of um interiors name you know who's the current minister of interior and that's because the application goes through the ministry of interior and you can actually do that with your wife so a lot of people when they're they'll do that with their wife and their wife kind of does it for them um i actually knew more of the answers than my wife did and i can read it as well and then what happens is you so you're collecting points through this process right you you collect points like you get points for how much tax you've paid you get points for how good your english is you get points for your presentation you get you get so they're kind of tallying up points and i'm not sure what happened there. my screen just changed color okay so you you kind of tally up points and then you have to sort of get a certain amount of points to sort of pass if you will so that that means you can wait if, if people are sort of 
faltering here, they can kind of pick up the slack here. So this is why a lot of people whose tie isn't particularly great can get through because they'll pick up the slack on income tax and donations and things like that. And that's sort of how that process works. Um, once that's sort of all put together, you then have an interview with what I believe is the special forces or sorry, the secret service of Thailand. They meet you in like a co-working space and you go there and I went there with my wife. We had an interview and I've heard things like apparently they follow you home, which I found out after that. I don't know, just to find out if you do actually go home with your wife. Um, we would have passed out on the flying colors because I didn't know that. And we went to the supermarket on the way home. And I think if we were <laughs> pretending to be married, we, we probably wouldn't have done that. Um, and then after that, it goes through to the Ministry of Interior. And when it goes through to the Ministry of Interior, you have a meeting with, it's like a committee. I think for me, because it was during COVID, so for me, there were around about 20 people, maybe 30 there. And then there were about another 15 online on the Zoom conference. And I was sitting there with my wife and everyone's kind of masked up. And the reason why the masking was kind of amusing was because they were asking me questions. And I didn't know whose face to look at because, like, you know, there's like 25 people and they've all got their mask on. So when someone asks a question, I'm like, didn't know who to look at to answer the question. But they were asking questions like, why do you want to get your Thai citizenship? Um, what is it about Thailand you like? How, how did you meet your wife? Blah, blah, blah. And just they get to know you. And now it's at this point here that a lot of people want to know, do you have to sing the? I'm not sure if you've heard this. People say you have to sing the, uh, the, the, the King song or the, 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 the Royal Anthem, uh, the national anthem, sorry. That's actually not in, not entirely true. Ah, I don't have the document with me. It's upstairs. And I, the reason why people don't know this is because most people who go for their citizenship can't read Thai. If you can read Thai, it's actually quite clear because they send you a letter inviting you to the ministry of interior telling you, you know, you've been, you know, invited for your naturalization process. And then it's got these two checks. One of them is, I, I can't remember what it is, is like, um, saw Pam hit port and Tita. Uh, it's, it's, it, was, it was like something like, uh, we're trying to, you know, to find out why it is you want to become a Thai national. And the other one is basically checking your Thai language ability. And then in brackets, it has uh, playing Sun Sun Praparami, which is the King's Anthem, and then the Peng Chat. So they have you sing those. But that's only if during the process, your tie kind of sucked. So if, you, if you're going through the whole thing and your tie is sort of on the edge, like you've got someone translating, you're going through, your wife's answering these questions for you, and they're like, nah, they make you sing it there. And then they'll often ask you, like, this sentence in this song, what does it mean? And they'll go through that. But with mine, they didn't put that, they didn't check that for me because throughout the process, my tie hadn't faulted at all. So I, that that's something that I think people might be quite interested to know. Do you have to sing the national anthem and the, the King song? Yes, you do. But only if your tie isn't fluent. Um, uh, and okay. you know what? I, I, no one's been able to, no one was ever able to give me that question, that answer, because everyone I know, everyone went through an agency to, to go through the process where they pay between 800,000 and 1.2 million baht to go through the process. Uh, the actual, the real fee is 5,100 baht. That's the real fee. And that's what I paid, 5,100 of the good Thai baht. So that's the process. And then once it goes through that one there, the it goes to the king, he signs it. So once it's passed that it goes to the king, he signs it, comes back. Then they put all that paperwork, they send it back to Santiban or the naturalization office for foreigners naturalizing to Thai citizenship. They then give you this big paperwork. You then take that to the local government district office where they issue you your local, your Thai ID card. And then with that and all that paperwork, you go around to all the banks, change all that around. You go to the um, uh, your driving license and you get all that turned over to being a fully Thai. So this kind of reminds me, uh, I do feel like I'm going on a very long monologue here, but it does remind me about the point where I mentioned about holding more than one citizenship. Yeah, it's just so going according to, ask, to yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, so according to Thai law, you're not allowed to hold more than one citizenship. However, that doesn't seem to be enforced. As we know, there's a big difference in a law that is enforced and a law that's not enforced. Uh, a lot of the uh, power, a lot of powerful people in Thailand have more than one citizenship. Really, what it is is when you're in Thailand, if you have Thai citizenship, when you're in Thailand, be Thai. That's what it is. Don't try and play a double game where you you rent a vehicle on this and you you try to get the the VAT on the way out and don't do that. Don't be like, oh, shit, I crashed my car. Oh, I'll use this driving license to avoid that. Don't do that. Then that's when they'll have a problem with you. If you're here in Thailand as a Thai, being Thai, using everything as a Thai would, 
then they don't tend to enforce the the other citizenships uh, that you may hold. Brilliant. I hope that was clear. Yeah, no, you, um, that's really good. I'm really happy that you cleared that up because that's going to help a lot of people. But Mark, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much for for doing the interview. It was a pleasure listening to you. I wish you all the best. And what I'll do yeah, is I'll good link to be on the show. Yeah, I'll link your social media in the description, your Instagram, your YouTube channels. My new YouTube it. channel, please. I've I've just set up yeah, a new YouTube you channel. New it's brand one. new. It's it's it's. I'm just it's it's for fun for people who just want to sort of understand just some interesting things about Thailand. It's literally if I just think something's kind of interesting or quirky about this country, I'll make a video about it. Um, it's very very new. I think I've got like seventy five subscribers or something like that. So it's it's very very new. Um, but yeah, that would be appreciated. <laughs> uh, yeah, no worries. All right, everyone. So links are in the description, everybody. Subscribe to this channel if you're not already subscribed. Leave us a comment and hit the like button. And Mark, it's been a pleasure. Nice to you meet too, you. You too, man. Nice Take to meet you. Take it man. easy. Have a good day. See ya. Bye.